In this video, we are looking at the Warscry Citadel from Malign Portents. Hello, this is Craig from bitswatch.co.uk, and in this video, we are looking at the Warscry Citadel from Malign Portents. So, we're going to do a sort of a little unboxing to have a look in it, and now I'm going to build it up and we're going to size comparison it with other miniatures so we can just see just how big this thing is. I mean you can see here the box is absolutely huge and if we compare it to this is like a bowel pellet of box I've got the pieces in it. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to get it all in shot but yeah this thing is huge and the thickness of it is massive like twice the size of a normal GW box so it really is huge. Um, I'm gonna move the camera around and we'll have a look inside. Okay, so here it is. Um, I had to really adjust the camera to get all this in shot. I apologise for the light just reflecting off the surface of the box. I'll have to tilt up a little bit. And um, we have super bright lights in here for filming. So yeah, you appreciate just how big this box is. And has a lid that comes off and just slides up. Now the, um, probably of no interest to anyone, but the quality of the card, cardboard used on the box is not um, the usual high GW standard. So I probably wouldn't use this box to store much in afterwards, it'll probably come apart quite easily. Um, so yeah, the first thing first, we agreed with these two massive pieces. Um, really nice, because makes the whole thing quite easy to put together. And then we have a little assembly guide and underneath this piece of card or with the it is just a piece covering it then we have the sprues inside so we'll get rid of that so we have one sprue here lots of large pieces on it so it's hopefully going to be quite quick to put together there's still a fair few pieces to it but they're all quite large we have some little bits for the tower where the observatory goes on, so I'll get that in the shot. Not used to looking up so high at the camera. Um, we have another sprue, so I think these two sprues are identical. So they are, there's two identical sprues for the tower that will go around for the observatory. And then we have the observatory pieces there. Some other pieces on the frame. Some roof pieces also as well. So yeah, not a massive um, amount of stuff to glue together, so it's quite cool. I've never actually seen um, this in person before myself, so this is all new to me as well. So yeah, I really expect to have these massive pieces here. Now these are probably um, Similar to the other terrain pieces that they've had made in China and stuff, sort of um, whether they're vacuum formed or however they make them, I don't know. But um, usually different to their traditional methods. You can sort of feel that on the plastic. You can feel different sort of texture to the plastic. And then um, the rest of the pieces might just be the sort of what we're used to when it comes to GW kits. But yeah, really cool. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this all glued together. And then in the next part of this video, we'll size comparison it up with some large miniatures. Okay, so here it is in all its glory. So, it took a little while to build. There's a few gaps that need filling. Still see the odd little ones between some of the bits of the building, but I'm not too concerned about them. Um, it's all been sprayed with um, a grey primer. It's the uniform grey or base grey from Army Paint. I can't remember exactly which one. I've left a couple of bits separate so this bit is separate. As is this bit, as I may have it. There's alternative battlements as well so I may have both of them separate so we can switch them out. So we're gonna Compare it to a few miniatures, 
and I'm just going to sit down and make it easier for me. As you can see, I've got a couple of knights over to one side. Obviously, they're not in Age of Sigma, but they're nice, large models, and they can really help you appreciate just how big this thing is. So, if we start going back, we have a regular Imperial Knight, and then we have one of the four drawled ones, one of the taller ones, and this thing is just way above both of them. So while you might look at this train piece and think, oh, it's quite expensive, I think it's £65. Um, it's still cheaper than a knight. And it is just huge. I actually love this knight miniature, so... But why not get him out on film again? So, um, I'm going to compare him to some other miniatures, so I'll just get these knights out of the way and then we'll be back. Next up we have a Lariel, one of the taller miniatures um, that GW do. And even her, she barely gets up to this tower up here. And we have the new Great Unclean one as well, who is all the way down here. So, quite a difference. Now if we just switch them out, let's move them to one side, we have a lot of change as well, even with his large wings. He's still not getting up to the higher tower and house. And then slightly smaller, but I thought we'll put him in the... Oh, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> this guy. So, that sort of gives you an idea for a scale. What I also want to do is get some smaller miniatures, so you can see how they stand up alongside. So we have a Stormcast, an Orc Boy, and we have Dingle v Moon Clan Grot. So, we pan back, see just how small they look compared to it. And they're all on different bases, so we've got 25, 32, and 40. And I just want to see how well each of them will go on and for walkways and stuff. So, as you can see, a 32mm essentially is the same width as this walkway, which means the Stormcast, he's not having any of it. It's tough. We have the upper walkways as well, and I'm going to need to spin it around for them. Now, the upper walkways I found a bit of a pain to put on. But they do look pretty cool, and I'm doing this delicately, it's just, uh, I just don't want anything to break. It should be quite solid. You can see I've added some vines and stuff to it also. So the upper walkways, quite narrow also. So again, we've got the 32 and a 25, and for Mr. Stormcast, you know, he's hanging off the edge there. So, and um, whilst these aren't really designed in game to have people up in them, the walkways are there, but it's tough if you've got anything larger than a 32mm base. Now, of course, once you get bigger than a 40mm, which is what this guy's on, you're really having difficulties. So, um, little models do look pretty cool up there, though. So, that is for War Squire Siddle. I have a large job at hand now to um, paint it all up. And hopefully I will get that done um, sooner rather than later, and you guys will see it in a future bat rep. We will do some more bat reps in the future. I know there's a bit of a break at the moment, but they will be coming back, so don't worry. And yeah, we'll have this as a centerpiece, no doubt. So, and we just had a quick idea before we go. So here we have one of the Chaos um, Dreadhold Towers. And um, forgive me that it's in a few pieces and this isn't even attached. It's, yeah, I built it a while ago but it took a few barons once we were moving the stuff around in here and, and that's so... Yeah, it's not in great condition. Um, really, ideally, I should be moving this around. I'm just gonna move over there so we can just 
get them side by side height wise so you can see the height is very similar so as a terrain piece it it's quite um, large also um, I can't remember how much this piece was I think it might be 80 pounds might be more um, so do, do forgive me that I haven't got all the figures with me um, this, this is just a literal, literally I just thought I just see it off to one side I thought actually we'll get that on video so compare them together a bit more practical this one you can get some you can get more stuff up top um, a lot of these pieces have just come off I need to fix them all and a bit in tear um, in terms of putting them together, while it's had, it's a bit of a nightmare at times, um, it's a million times easier than putting this thing together. This thing is, uh, is an absolute nightmare. I may try to get some stronger glue for it. Um, normal point cement, don't really cut it too well. But yeah, um, great kit. Definitely recommend getting one if you're willing to spend. Um, money on the big centerpiece of terrain that will, will look really fantastic in the center of the battlefield. So yeah, that's all that's left to say on the War Squire Citadel, and I really look forward to you painting up. So um, if you have enjoyed this video or found it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. Um, leave any comments down below on your if you have any opinions on this terrain piece yourself, or any any cool ideas for a color scheme would be really handy as well. I have a rough idea, but it's always good to hear other people's suggestions. I'm not going to go quite the same as it is on the box. And um, you can subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can check out our Patreon. We have monthly giveaways. Um, we are giving away one of these bad boys this month. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning a great unclean one. Um, brand new, still in box and all that. Um, yeah, hop onto our Patreon and anyone on the $10 or over pledge will be in with a chance to win that. And on the lower pledges, there's still other great benefits, such as free shipping for our website, and you can see a lot of our videos earlier than YouTube. So, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video.